and welcome back to the Financially Simple Experience. Today, we're going to dive back into this topic of when is too much, too much. What are we talking about? Cash. Yes. Cold, hard cash. Yes, I know we've dealt with this in the past, but once again, I want to deal with this topic of how much cash should we really have? How much cash should we really have? So, Justin, haven't you dealt with cash in the past? Yes. In fact, in the very first few episodes of the Financially Simple Podcast and several times on social media, if you want to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, anywhere you can see us, I've dealt with this issue of cash. But now I want to use a different backdrop. I want to use a different backdrop. For almost four years now, in fact, most of my career, but for almost four years as I've had the financially simple experience moving and been a, a teacher, a multi-credentialed um, advisor, even as whenever I reach multimillionaire status myself, I have not forgotten how business owners look at cash. It's always intriguing to me. It's always intriguing to me. See, oftentimes I tell business owners that we should hold cash. But oftentimes I've met, I'm met with, well, but I can make a better return in my company or I can invest in assets outside of my company. I can invest in the stock market. I mean, isn't that what you would like to me to do? Or I have enough cash flow. And there's a litany of other things to which people will provide in the terms of a rebut to my statement that says you need to hold cash. And all these reasons for not holding cash seem legit until life happens, until life happens. See, 2020 came along and we started out last year, hindsight 2020, as I heard someone say yesterday, we started out last year with unbelievable, unbelievable market conditions. Business in the United States was at banner high, lowest unemployment rate in history, the highest GDP. I mean, we were, we were just kicking tail and taking names they would say in the South. And then COVID hit and COVID hit. And I can remember my, I can remember asking myself this question. Are business owners such poor money managers that we have to rely on the government's intervention to survive? I can remember that me asking that question consistently in my head as I was watching things unfold because of the, the shutdown with the pandemic that came about and then the CARES Act and the PPP monies and the idle monies and all these things that the government started providing. I, I, I looked back and I said, man, yeah, we are. Yeah, we are such poor money managers that we had to have as a populace of business owners. 5.3 million business owners in the United States, according to Marco Rubio, who gave that statistic as the backdrop for COVID relief PPP payroll protection program number one. 5.3 million business owners that had, as we were told on TV, to have the money. And in fact, you could apply for the money, which was ultimately forgiven and allowed deductibility, as long as you thought you were going to be adversely infected because of the COVID pandemic and the shutdown. And I ask myself the question still today, are we such poor money managers that we had to have government intervention? See, being a business owner for over 20 years and working with hundreds, if not thousands of business owners during my career, I see a trend. Many business owners operate in this cash strapped feeling. I often feel that we're cash strapped. And it doesn't really have anything to do with the numerator in the bank or the amount of the size of the bank account. It has to do with the flow of the business. Well, why is that? Why do we business owners often feel cash strapped? Or why is it we don't hold enough cash? I found two reasons that I think in my own life that I personally have dealt with. And perhaps you've dealt with these. Maybe there's another reason for you, but there's a two that, that make sense to me. Number one is I have this inev inept I would say inept, I'd probably be accurate. I had this attitude that where there is no risk, there is no reward. I am willing to try something to see if it'll yield a result. And candidly, most business owners that I know of are willing to take a risk. We're willing to take a risk in business. In fact, if we were not risk takers, we never would have gone in business to begin with. We would become uh, an employee at a Fortune 500 company, perhaps, or we'd be we work in a 501c3. We would not have started up or bootstrapped our own company or bought our company, and we certainly would, wouldn't be trying to operate a business in uncertainty as we're operating in today. So we have this idea that there is, if there's no risk, there's, there's no reward. So the only way that we know oftentimes how to 
um, include risk into our business life is to spend cash. And we spend it on good things oftentimes. We spend it on marketing. We spend it on assets. We buy equipment. We, we take clients out to dinner. We spend, spend, spend. That's the first thing I've seen. The other thing I've seen is no one ever wins on the first shot. <laughs> no one ever wins on the first shot. We have a, we have a uh, little amusement park here, um, kind of like a theme park called Dollywood here in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. It's, the, it's one of the most um, sought-after destinations in the United States. It's, it's really one of the vacation hotspots of our country. And at Dollywood, there's this game that I'm sure you've seen in a carnival where you shoot a basketball into a basket, and there's a attendant who is providing you maybe, you know, you get two shots for $5 or something of that nature. And here you are walking up to that basketball um, to take, walking up with the basketball in hand to take a shot at that basketball hoop only to brick. In fact, gatherers often come behind you because we realize if we truly know that we think we can beat the odds that the rim is smaller, the balls have more air in it, they're going to bounce more. Uh, maybe the rim is not is not perfectly level. Maybe it's cock out a little bit. The, the rim is not at 10 foot. It may be at 11. It may be at 10 foot six. So the perfect three foot uh, three point shooter who walks up and can just drill a three point shot on a traditional basketball rim inevitably is short or when they try to correct it's over or the rim. So you end up not often getting the shot. In business, it's the same way. It often takes time and money and multiple shots. It's almost like it does with that, with that basketball game that we see at carnivals and at Dollywood. It also takes time and money and multiple shots in order for business owners to find the correct cash flow or to find the mix in their business which provides them what they're ultimately looking for. So there's two reasons that I'm aware of that I've even dealt with in my own life. Hey, I have this attitude. There's no risk. There's no reward. We're going to charge hell with a water pistol. Let's go. You've heard me say that. In fact, I made a statement multiple times last year throughout 2020 that said, I will bet on the American entrepreneur every single day of the week. I will. Owning a business is one of the most difficult things we can do. At some point, we've all considered hanging up and selling. But is the saleable value of your business what you think it is? Heritage Business Advisors can help you to maximize your business's value through targeted value growth and exit planning. To learn more, visit heritagebusinessadvisors.com. But that leaves us to reality. The reality is this. Currently in the United States, employers are failing 30% less than they were in the 70s. Our failure rate in business is declining. Well, partially because we are now more committed to planning, which is why I harp so much on hire a plan or get a plan or it's well worth the money. They're worth their weight in gold. You've heard me say all the sayings. But business owners today are working on building their planning. They're working on becoming educated in the areas of business. We see this. On average, about two-thirds of small businesses survive for the first two years, half survived for five years, and only one in three in 10 years. So we business owners, you know, we're surviving at a greater rate than we were in the 70s, but it's still dismal. A U.S. bank study showed that 82% of businesses fail due to, due to poor cash flow, due to poor cash flow management, poor understanding of how cash flow works. We understand that we should have cash. And in fact, COVID let us know that we business owners need to hold cash more than ever. I've heard more business owners as we begin this year talk about part of my goal is to build my cash reserves, get my cash reserves up. Friends, I got to tell you, I've been doing this almost 20 years now. I've never heard business owners say, I need cash. It was always, I need to go do something with my cash. Now I'm hearing something different. So that leads me to the question with the backdrop of, of COVID, well, how much cash do we really need? So I want to separate our lives into two facets. Number one, we have our home life, and then we have our business life. So if you're married filing jointly, or if you're single, the answer is differently. So in each of our checking accounts, let's start with our checking account first. I believe we should have one month worth of expenses in our checking account. So that means if your house, your car payment, your insurances, your kids' school bills, et cetera, comes to $10,000, then I believe you should have $10,000 at all times in your checking account. That covers you for one month. And then I believe in your checking, I'm sorry, in your savings account, I believe in your savings account, you should have between three to six months worth of your expenses set back. So if your expenses are $10,000 a month, then you need between thirty dollars to $60,000. Well, how do you know the difference? Well, if you're a two-income family, 
two-income family, you're going to need a little less. Chances of both people losing their jobs, unless you're in the same business, chances of both people losing their jobs from two different type of non-correlating uh, income streams is pretty slim, so you may only need three months. If you and your spouse or significant other are both working in the same business, then you may need six months worth of, of your home expenses set back in a savings account. Okay, Justin, so that's pretty basic. I've heard everybody out there. I mean, Dave Ramsey, Rick Edelman, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, everybody, even Susie Orman says we should have three to six months worth of our, of our expenses set back in a savings account. Great. That's our rainy day fund for home. But as we saw during COVID last year, we need to have money set back in our business as well. So I've been preaching this. In fact, it's well documented. It has date and time stamps on it in our podcast world, in our blog world, and in our social media world. In the same fashion as we do on our home front, our business needs to have one month worth of float. One month worth of float. What do I mean by float? If your typical monthly expenses are roughly about $50,000 a month, then you need to have roughly $50,000 in your checking account. There's your one month float. Well, what about your savings account? Yeah, we business owners need a savings account. In the same fashion as we're looking at that one month, uh, in the same fashion as we're looking in on our personal savings, three to six months, I firmly believe that we need three to six months worth of cash set up in our business. Man, Justin, that seems like a lot of cash. You know, I have clients that had business income, I'm sorry, business expenses in the neighborhood of $200,000 a month, $300,000 a month, $1 million a month. And I can remember telling one of them who particularly, this came to my, comes to my mind as I'm doing this, that he had about $200,000 a month in expenses, not including profits, none of his income, just pure expenses on a, on a fixed rate. And so I remember saying, buddy, I need you to have about $1.2 million in cash. And I'm telling you, whenever that came out of my tongue, I'm like, man, that's a lot of cash. Let me tell you what happened. COVID hit. He was literally in a position that he did not have to take PPP money to survive. None of his employees were laid off. He was able to consider the employee retention credit versus PPP. He was considered able to look at all option. He wasn't stressed. It got even better for him. He was able to actually deploy when the market fell. He was able to deploy a significant amount of cash into investments and buy almost on the lowest date when the market bottomed and then ride that up. And his $1.2 million, he received the market return of 30, 40, 50, 60%, depending on which asset class he was in. It was amazing, amazing to watch his net worth drastically increase. Oftentimes when I start talking about cash, business owners, because we're pretty creative, we'll figure out a way to skin that cat as the old saying goes, right? We'll think about, well, if we have a line of credit, does that count? Or do we have a, if we have a credit card, does that count? Or if we have equity, maybe equity in a, in a, in a property that we own, et cetera. Do they count for cash? Yeah, they can get you through in a pinch. But here's what happens. Whenever, whenever things dry up, whenever the, the markets, as we saw in 2020, dry up, oftentimes lending becomes tough. If we need to go out and get, gain a loan when the markets fall, when we don't have cash, banks are not our friends. I can remember back, back in 7, 8, and 9, 2007, 8, and 9, whenever the markets and the economy went through the Great Recession, as we've now coined it, and bank loans were called. I can remember that. So lending is often, or debt is often not the best place. Does it work in a pinch? Yeah, sure it does, as you build your cash reserves up. But here's what you got to remember. Having cash creates opportunity. Having cash creates opportunity. Think about the client that I mentioned. Had he, in this case, not had the cash set back, would, have been, would he have been able to multiplicatively grow his net worth? No. He would have been like so many others who experienced that fear of, am I even going to be able to keep my employees in the business? He didn't have that because he had cash. And his net worth grew. See, we've got to become comfortable with a 0% return on our cash. That means all of our other assets should be yielding the desired return on investments to achieve our goals. So as we look at our retirement accounts, our rental properties, our businesses, and everything, and we're running an ROI calculation on each of those assets, they need to be doing be, become so efficient that the portion that we have in cash, we're okay with it not making a return. We've got to get comfortable making a 0% return. Why? Friends, it's simple. Simple. 
you know this. Is when I say this, you're going to say, Justin, you're right. Cash equals freedom. Having cash on hand equals freedom. Freedom from having to rely on a bank. We don't have to go into servitudeism if we need, if we don't want to or desire to. Freedom allows us to not rely on the government, as so many had to with the PPP and the idol and things of that nature. Cash equals freedom allows us to be selective on how we grow our companies. So my challenge to you is this. Take, a, take an assessment of where you're at right now. You know you need cash. You know it. You probably one of your goals, in fact, is to rebuild your cash, well, cash supplies from what happened last year. Take an assessment. Do you truly have three to six months set back in your personal savings account? Do you have one month in your personal checking to help cover the float? And in your business, do you have one month in your checking and perhaps three to six months in your savings? Yes, it's possible that could equal a lot of cash. We're trying to make sure that we have three to six months worth of expenses in our home and three to six months worth of expenses in our business set back in cash. And only when you're able to achieve that will you understand the freedom, the freedom that it yields. Until you reach that pinnacle of that particular mountain, it is a struggle. And it is because there's so many things, shiny objects, which catch our eyes. So my challenge to you this year, friend, is, to, is you're building your strategic plan. As we're in this planning time of the year, as so many business owners are, put a goal out for how much cash you want to have in your company, in your personal checking, set a, set a goal, make it where you can achieve that goal, and then get after it. Let's make it happen. We don't know what 2021 is going to bring us from this point forward throughout the year, rest of the year. We've already seen what it's brought thus far. And holy cow, I hope things drastically change. But cash is king and cash equals freedom. Friends, I realize life is hard. Man, seems like it'll never get easy and never get back to normal, it seems like. But life is hard. But life is good. Life is good. We are a blessed people. There's opportunity all around us to make every day the most impactful day of our lives. We can, we can just, man, we can grow so much during these times. And I realize it can be frustrating, but money doesn't have to be. We're going to continue to make our lives at least financially simple. Hey, y'all go out and make it a great day. This tip is for informational purposes only. Please speak with a competent financial advisor regarding your specific needs. Justin Goodbread is a registered investment advisor with Heritage Investors. Visit heritageinvestor.com, financiallysimple.com for additional information.